This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Chain of Command. I am joined by Richard from uh, Two Fat Lardies and today we are playing a new scenario with two new factions. So, uh, Richard, mm. what are we playing today? We are taking a scenario straight out of the Blitzkrieg 1940 book which is called Going With A Bang and that's quite literal. Um, I have got a force of French motorcycle troops uh, and I'm up against uh, Justin's force of first wave German infantry, uh, good quality troops. My objective is not to beat him in a traditional sense, but it's to blow up a couple of key culverts on the road. We've got a small culvert here, we've got a large culvert here. So part of my support options is a team of engineers with their little van. And uh, I've also taken uh, a 25 mil anti-tank gun because I'm a bit worried about these blitzkrieging Germans having some armor. So my key force is three group to combat or three squad sections, call them what you will, and a rather nice little uh, team of rifle grenadiers who can put down a little bit of a kind of in-house mortar barrage, Ooh. if you like. So they're pretty funky. That could be frisky. Something a bit different, yeah. Mm. But what am I up against? What have you got over there on the side of naughtiness? Uh, well, uh, so you said this is first wave Germans, so first we get wave. Mm. all the toys. You so get, I've got a couple yeah. of Panzer twos. so yeah. you're right to be worried about tanks, because yeah. yeah. those could be bad day biscuits. Mm. I've got myself a, I believe it's a 50 millimeter mortar crew. Yeah, that comes as part of your core platoon, because your first wave, in other words, words you've got all the equipment you've got four squads mm -hmm. uh, each made up of a rifle team and a machine gun team right, and you've, a junior officer and you've got a uh, each one has got a junior leader that's mm -hmm. right your NCO but you've also got two senior leaders mm -hmm. an officer and a platoon sergeant and your 50 mil mortar team mm -hmm. um, but as you say uh, really good good troops mm -hmm. which has allowed you to take another support option which is new to this uh, this handbook, mm -hmm. which is the red dice. Ah, yes. So this this wonderful, wonderful red dice here. And that allows us to add that to mm -hmm. the rest of the command dice. Mm -hmm. But the key thing to remember here is that the red dice only counts for results of one, two, three, and four. Ah, so we ignore fives and sixes. It's not the bells and whistles rolls you get, it's the standard, but it's that little bit more command and control that a high quality unit like this can mm -hmm. select. You wouldn't get that if you were using one of the lower uh, wave German divisions because yeah. they're just not, they haven't got that degree of um, skill. Yeah. But these are really top quality blokes, so that's a lovely little option to, to have and hopefully give you a bit more initiative during the game. We'll mm -hmm. see how that runs. All right, well, the first mm. thing we're going to need to do is figure out who's going first. So I'll, I'll roll my lucky red. Yeah, uh, so we're rolling for force morale. And it helps if I roll into it, right? <laughs> it does. For so a four. four. So you've got a force morale of, uh, you've got a force morale there of nine. Uh -huh. And I'm going to roll my unlucky white dice, and I've got a three, which means I'm on nine as well. Mm -hmm. So that puts us pretty much on uh, level peggings. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, normally what happens is we start now with the patrol phase, and the side with the higher force morale would go first. Clearly we've got the same force morale, so we have an opposed roll to see who goes first. Let's roll simultaneously three, four. Yeah, four. It's yeah. same moi as uh, we would say in French. <laughs> right, good job it wasn't you, because I can't do that in German. Right, okay, so what we're going to do here with the patrol phase is that I have got four patrol markers down here on this, this junction, mm -hmm. okay? And Justin has got four patrol markers up, up here, yep. right at the end of the road here, where you can just see my hand wiggling about. Right, yep. there we go. So what we do in the patrol phase is these ignore all terrain they just move 12 inches but they have to keep within 12 inches of another patrol marker mm -hmm. so i'm keen obviously to start defending and getting hold of this culvert so i'm going to send my first patrol marker whizzing down the road towards that mm -hmm. so i move 12 inches now your opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. to move let me just check i think i've pinched an inch there there we go <laughs> all right well on my side i have to start from mm -hmm. Way back here. Way back there. And I have to wonder, mm. so this road I can mm. see you're going to be rolling up it. Yeah. And I think the best thing for me to do mm. is just to ignore you and actually start. <laughs> Most people do, if I'm honest. 
<laughs> start myself heading out right. this way. Okay. And with that there. done, I'm going to rush my second one up and actually just pop it straight on top of the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, as is the way we should be doing this, I think I'm probably going to do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have another one of my markers is just going to, oh, if I don't take two, it's just going to whiz up there and try and just create a bit of an opening, maybe right. out and around the bit of a hill we have here. Yeah, well, I can see you pushing along there. So I'm actually going to move my patrol marker up here into the yard at the back of the garage there mm -hmm. uh, in a hope of kind of trying to limit you. If you come within 12 inches of my mm -hmm. um, patrol Token, marker, yeah. we'll both be locked down. So at the moment, you're about 14, 15 inches away, but I'm actually attempting to push you out. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, hmm. you're very far forward there, and I think I can't really hang about. So I think what I need to do is just push myself right up onto the hill here and try and stay outside of 12. Okay. Which I think is about That's there. That's it. You, another inch. Just pop her into the woods and then you're there. Because we ignore terrain at this stage, so it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to carry on and push a patrol marker out into the fields here because i'm a bit worried about you moving right the way around my flank mm -hmm. so could be very risky but well one of the interesting it. things about the patrol phase is sometimes you see that whilst we're starting off with me at one end and justin at the other end that the game can pivot round as that represents where our patrols have come into contact mm -hmm. so you can find yourself playing across or down the table when it it yeah. started off differently the great thing is of course that means you can use the same terrain for a number of games and get a totally different result every time mm -hmm. so i think what mm. i'm going to do with my next one is mm. i'm going to start leapfrogging so yeah. I've got one at the back. Yeah, he's so just going to leap forward to pop here. Pop that straight down, and I'm actually going to do the same thing. So I'm just going up here because I, okay. I really do need to focus. Whilst I'm trying to push you away over there, mm -hmm. I really do need to focus here on securing this, uh, this, so my engineers can get to work on it. Mm -hmm. I think the the next mm -hmm. stop for me is he's going to leapfrog to there. Okay, and I'm going to push on as I was suggesting up to here. So I'm I'm going to be defending that mm -hmm. that culvert. I think the the next thing for me here is I really want to try and push out into here okay. to actually give myself... I might be out in open ground, but it's really just advancing myself mm. up the table, and I need to make sure I stay outside of 12. Yeah. So just back a wee half inch, yeah. which is fine. Okay, right. I'm getting a bit worried about that, because if you're coming around here, mm, my whole position could be really badly undermined. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to rush this one. Oh, rather disappointingly, I've left that out there. So I'm going to push this one forward to here. And uh, I think that's going to lock us down there. It is. In fact, I don't get quite that far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these on here oh. to show that those ones are locked down. Mm -hmm. A little flash of fire where our patrols are clashing. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think that is actually an opportunity for me uh, to take this marker that's mm. at the back and try and grab a bit of a cheeky run up the table here on the road. Okay, and I'm actually going to respond to that by locking you down, just moving forward to lock you down, because I don't like the idea of you threatening me over here towards the culvert. Mm -hmm. Right, now, hmm. I think with the last one, I'm actually going to lock this one of yours down, because I don't mm -hmm. want you getting any more yeah. on me there. Okay, so we're locked down there. Again, I'll pop these on there, and just for the last one, I'm going to just lock you down there. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I still have one that's loose, which you is the do, fun bit. You do, but w because one of us is locked down, as soon as one side is locked down, that's it. Every ah, The patrol phase stops. Now, we've looked at p the patrol phase before and how we use the, uh, use the patrol markers to determine where our jump off points are going to be. Basically, we, uh, we form a triangle using the lines from the two closest. Can I borrow your tape measure there? Of course, please, old chap. Thank you very so, much. There and there. So, the, so for this one here, for okay. my one here, if we use those two, I've got those lines going like that. So the places where I, I have to be at least six inches back and in cover. So for me, the option is going to be here. Ooh, way back. Uh, really right there back behind that this marshy ground here for that mm -hmm. one if I was using this one 
the lines would go through there, which would put me back here in the orchard. Which might not be too bad. Which, well, it's a pretty good position, that. Um, if I was going to do this one, the, the two closest. closest ones are there. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. See, I'll hold this. You good lad. And over there. So again, I'd either be back in the orchard or maybe put something back in the house. Possibly. Uh, which could be good for defending this junction. Because mm -hmm. as I've got to de destroy both culverts, I mm -hmm. might need to be thinking about defending deep. Mm -hmm. And with the last one, we've got a line through there and there, which again, either gives me the house yeah. or it gives me some somewhere back in these hedges back mm -hmm. here. Now, what options... Now, I've got four patrol markers, but I'm only going to deploy three jump-off points, so I have to decide which one of those to abandon. Now, for you, there's some interesting ones. Here, there, and there means you're going to be deploying, because there's no cover, you're going to be deploying back here in the region of the table edge. Mm -hmm. uh, same again for that one. Yeah, so I'd be back, back over there. here. This one's much better. It's going to give you an option of going behind that wood, which is getting you the start of that flank manoeuvre you wanted. Mm -hmm. And this However, one... This is the one I really mm, want it. Now, this is an interesting one. There's no cover, but... So there's no cover there. Because there's no cover, yeah. you have to go to a table edge, but it, do, it would get you on there, on that table edge, right by your finger, mm -hmm. which would allow you a quick hop, and all of a sudden, you really are out flanking. Yeah. So See, that one, there's some I, I, I quite like this one. Yeah, I agree with you. Whilst it's in the open, it's going to be at quite long range, and it does give you some options on the flank. Mm -hmm. So your options are back here, mm -hmm. behind the wood, and over there. My options, well, let's start. I, as I went uh, first in the patrol phase, mm -hmm. I start mine, putting mine down first. So I'll, I'll go back here with one of them, which is right on the culvert where I... Where I need to be defending. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put your first one? Uh, well, <laughs> let's see. Hmm. I think I'm going to put my first hmm. one right back on the the table edge, like we said. Yeah. So he'll go, I think, roughly. That's it. Here. That's, yeah, that's fine. So that's that's actually uh, whilst it's in the open, it's actually a pretty good position because you're only six inches away from getting over that hedge. Yeah. If you come on a bit of Tactical deployment, coming on tactical, mm -hmm. you're, at, you're probably going to be at long range, you're getting good cover, mm -hmm. you might take a bit of shock or something, but you'll probably get to where you want to go. Exactly. Um, my next one I'm going to put, I am going to put it, because I'm really worried about that flanking manoeuvre, so I'm going to put one here in this house. Ah. That's going to give me an opportunity. Because I'm motorcycle troops, normally regular troops get to deploy within six inches of their jump off point, but because I'm motorcycle troops, I get there a little bit faster, mm. so I can deploy within nine inches. So that actually gives me Ooh. quite a good option. Yeah, so you've um, got the, the so whole I edge could, of the house, has it? Yeah, so I, from there, I could be in the orchard, I could be on the hedge line, I could be on that hedge line mm. or behind that. So that's a good central position that's going to hopefully allow me to block any flanking manoeuvre. Mm. So where's your next one going? Uh, my next mm. one, I'm not going to be fancy with this. Yeah. So we see up yeah. there. Yeah, on the road, the road. That's it. On, on the, the table road, edge. At the so. table edge. You yeah. Just about out of shot yeah. there, but that's, that's okay. It. Right. And uh, yeah, right back here on the, the road. And for my final one, I'm actually going to put it in the orchard, which was the in one the generated by that. Because right. I think that gives me a good central position. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have a look at it in a minute. It's quite interesting mm -hmm. how you can, and you're going back behind the woods, which of course. you got a line there through to there so i mean you, you could put it there which might give you ah okay left or right bit of options it's up to yeah. you right so we'll take the patrol markers off and yes. actually that's kind of a moment of truth because the patrol markers can sometimes be a little bit um uh, you can focus so much on them you're not really thinking about where the jump off points are what we've actually seen is where our patrols have met the the battle has sort of uh, crystallized with my forces really just holding around this area, mm -hmm. and yours having already started moving out on the flanks. Yeah, trying to pull up and That's around. That's right. So we're getting to the point where once, once we put figures on the table, we're not having my lot start right down here and spending half the, the evening or the day at the club moving up the table to contact. We're getting to the point where we're at first point of contact. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is getting up straight to the nitty gritty. Yep. So, however, one thing I didn't tell you about. <laughs> Why do I sense nasty tricks? Being sneaky. Um, was this another support option that I've chosen, which are a couple of minefields. Oh, lovely. Now, what you do with minefields is you get to deploy them after the patrol phase, so they are a nasty shock. 
and I'm going to put down my two minefields, six inches square, slap bang. On the road. Across the road oh. and up to the table edge. So that is hopefully going to buy me time to allow my engineers mm -hmm. to, uh, to come along and uh, do what they've got to do in terms of destroying that culvert. So uh, as part of the process, trees may have to be harmed, but never mind. Um, I didn't know that the, the French had a, a landscaping business during World War II. <laughs> well, there we go. How's that? So all of a sudden, a slight change. You think your patrols have got it, but what they hadn't noticed was yeah. some minefields, mine which field. we're using barbed wire here to uh, denote, to, the, edges, to denote yeah. the edges. But in reality, what happens is when your troops come up, they all look minefields. So I wish I had some engineers. Yes, indeed. One of those things, if only you'd selected engineers as a support option, you mm -hmm. could have dealt with that. Well, funnily enough, the other thing that I selected as a support option that you didn't know about was some anti-aircraft machine guns. Ah. Now, uh, they're completely redundant in this scenario because with all that's been happening during the Blitzkrieg, one of the things I was really worried about was just in selecting a Stuka attack to come along as a preliminary to his, his Blitzkrieg type advance. Yeah. So I selected some anti-aircraft machine guns to try and reduce the effect of that. As it is, no Stukas, mm -hmm. my anti-aircraft machine guns are therefore redundant. But uh, it, was, it was worth having them just to try and make sure that I had some kind of anti-aircraft defense mm -hmm. if that came along. Yeah, this is something <coughs> I always find whenever you're, you're playing games. Mm -hmm. You get, I used to have a, a couple of friends who would always ask me, oh, what are you building, what are you putting in your mm -hmm. list these days? And it was mm -hmm. them playing that, the war game before the war game, yeah, trying yeah. to figure out, oh, what's he, what's he gonna mm -hmm. probably put on the table? What yeah. can I build that's gonna beat that? Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's an interesting thing. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's a bit like um, rock, paper, scissors. Sometimes you've got the scissors and they don't select the paper yeah. and it's no good. But at least you've got that reassurance, you know, if those Stukas were coming, I wasn't going to get completely obliterated yeah. by them. Um, okay, right. So who goes first? Well, being evil and attacking, yes. you go first. I'll go first. All right. So <clears throat> uh, as you'll remember from our previous games, the first thing we're going to do is roll our chain of command dice here. Yeah. And the you, of course have a bonus of having that extra yeah. red dice. So that's going to give you that little bit more command ability. What a lovely start. Oh, that is, that's a very nice start. In fact, there's a whole lot you could do with that. Well, first off, the five gives me plus one to my chain of command dice. Yeah. So remember, those chain of command points don't do very much until you get to six chain of command points, at which point you can spend your full chain of command dice. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Yep, so we'll, we'll keep that. Then that allows lots of options such as interrupting your enemy's turn, mm -hmm. ending a uh, phase, ending a turn, um, uh, putting forward your jump off points, which can be a really good way of getting your troops moving rapidly mm -hmm. up the table. But we'll talk about that when we get there. So what else have you got now? Gonna spend the three. Yeah. And from, from off the table, your friends mm. hear an ominous rumble. An ominous rumble. Oh, yes. You're Can not, you're not looking for breakfast again. It's not your stomach, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, let's remember what these, um, what these command dice can do. So that's uh, very nice. You've yep. got the, the panzer turning up there. If you roll a one, mm -hmm. you can deploy a team onto the table. So that would be, in Justin's case, probably his 50 mil mortar. Yes. If you roll a two, you can deploy a squad onto the table. So a whole squad, the rifle team and the machine gun team. And the junior officer. And the junior leader. Um, and they can uh, fire or they can just stand still. Um, if you roll a three, that's your junior leader. He can come on with his whole squad, but it allows him to be a, a little bit more clever. So whereas if, if on a two, the squad comes on and decide to shoot at me, they'd have to shoot at one target. Yeah. If you've got the junior leader, he could say, rifles, shoot over there, machine guns, shoot over there. Yes. Or he could say, let's go on Overwatch. So anticipating me turning up and then being able to shoot in reaction. So the, the leader just gives you that bit more command. If you roll a four, you can bring on one of your senior leaders. Now. Bringing on a senior leader at this point, early in the game, your platoon sergeant or your officer, is not a good idea. Those are the guys you want to keep off table at the back, mm -hmm. controlling the battle, and then when things start getting tough, when you really want to add that extra punch yep. for an attack, or things are going badly and you want to rally your troops up, that's when you bring those guys on. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, you can add up um, two twos can make a four, mm -hmm. uh, two and a one can make a three. Yeah. Um, but what you can't do is add up to make a five or a six. Sixes 
which I'm sure you remember, tell us who's got the next phase. Mm -hmm. If there are no sixes like this, the next phase is mine. If there's one six, the next phase is still mine. There are two sixes, Justin gets a bonus. He gets the next phase again. Yep. And if it's three sixes, it ends the turn. Mm -hmm. A turn is made up of multiple phases of play. But anyway, we'll see that as we go through. So yep. what are you going to do, matey? Well, I've, I've brought my tack ah. on. How far can he drive on? Now he can't drive. Uh, if he was a little wheel vehicle, he could come on the table and zoom. Toot, uh -huh. toot. But he's on track. So he can come in within six inches of the of his deployment point. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, you have got a deployment point on that road, but he uh, he doesn't use your standard jump up points. He actually always uses a road I as see. where he comes on because I vehicles are... Uh, don't have that term. Um, I see, and I assume I couldn't use this road. Uh, you can't use that road because it's not on your friendly edge. If that yep. road was going round to your friendly edge, you could mm -hmm. have cho chosen which So one. let's say my jump off point had got beyond this road, yeah. would that make this a friendly edge? No. No? Okay. Important to know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I've used it the five, I've used the three. Yep. I've got three twos yep. and a four. Hmm. Mm. So three twos, I mean, if you wanted, you could bring on three three squads. I don't want to show my hand that early. I'll mm. bring on one squad. Okay. So one MG team, junior officer, yeah. and rifleman. Yeah. And where I'm going to bring them on is, mm. see right here, just inside mm. this forest. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if, the, if you were bringing them on, uh, in on a three, as we discussed, you could have put them on Overwatch anticipating me turning up. But because it's on a two... That's just the squad without the benefit of the leader using his creative thinking. Mm. So they can come on within six, six inches of that uh, point, so they can quite easily be uh, on the edge of that uh, uh, mm. uh, area of woodland, uh, but they can't go on Overwatch. But good position, great position, dominating yeah, the view got right now. Yeah, a nice field of fire down into where yeah. I know you've got two of your deployment yeah, zones that I can right. possibly get some shots off on. Okay. So that right. uses one of those. Yeah. So you don't have to use them all. Uh, in many cases, a lot of people go, hey, it's a race to get all the troops onto the table. In many cases, you know, you're better off not doing that. You're better off waiting to see what happens mm. before deciding where to deploy your troops. I think I'll end it at that. Okay, right. And so that puts it on to you, sir. Five dice for me. No red dice for me. I'm, uh, I don't have one of them. I don't, didn't get as many points. So a six, as we can see, means just one six. The next phase is Justin's. I add one point to my chain of command dice, which I'm using on these oversized dice. The good thing about the oversized size dice mm -hmm. is that you don't just pick it up and roll it when you're, when you're firing or whatever. It's, it, it, you, and then you lose track of how many chain of command points you've got. Mm -hmm. So uh, we develop those. So I've got a, that's my five. So I've got two threes and a one. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. A one. Right. Now, focusing on what my job is to do here, I'm gonna, I was thinking about bringing my little French rifle grenadiers on and giving you a bit of a stonk in those woods. Yeah. But only because I really like using the rifle grenadiers. My main job here is to blow up the blooming culverts. Yep. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use that one. Mm -hmm. I've knocked that over. Use that one to bring on my engineering team in their little van. Ah, uh, yes. So here we go. Toot toot. So they can come on within six of there, which they've done. Again, mm -hmm. their, their jump off point is the road because yep. they're a vehicle. But I, because I'm wheeled, can immediately drive. And I'm going to roll 3d6 because they're driving like the clappers, to use a technical term. Mm -hmm. And not only is that 10, it's doubled. So I can go 20 luxurious inches. 20 inches. Oof. At this point in time, it's pretty yeah. good to say things like toot toot, uh, broom broom, uh, as, we, mm. as, as we zoom up the road mm -hmm. with Gallic flair. Uh, right, two threes. Yep. What am I going to do with those two threes? You could start taking up some defensive positions there. I could do, and I think I've got to. I think I've got to react to two things. I've got to react to your tank. Mm -hmm. Although, do I? See, I'm pretty... Yeah, you're not bad because the tank is kind of blocked by those. So yeah, the tank is blocked by them, yeah. Out and around to even yeah. try and get a shot at you. So I was thinking about bringing my anti-tank gun on on a three, because that's got a junior leader with it, yeah. to, to, to try and scare off the tank. But the tank's not going to come through here, so I'm really not un under any threat at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave that, uh, and I, but I am going to put on one of my group de combat, which mm -hmm. is French, full squad. 
but it's not actually. <laughs> um, but I'll pop them on over here. Yeah. Now the the great thing about the motorcycle troops is they're very good at knocking over <laughs> dovecotes. But other than that, the great thing about them is that whilst they are relatively small squads uh, and consequently pretty brittle, mm -hmm. they have got two light machine guns, Oof. which means that they're pretty punchy yeah. while they hang around. Bit of a glass um, cannon, but okay. They are a bit of a glass hammer, but we're going to be the one hammering first, which can help. Mm -hmm. So you've got two machine guns, six dice each, that makes 12. And you've got four blokes with rifles, which makes 16. So they, they're they actually outgunning the German squads. This, this feels wrong. The Germans should never be outgunned. <laughs> it kind of does. That's one of the funny things about the early war period. You know, you've, a lot of things have stood on their head. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so how many dice we got there? We got six, eight, and therefore we want another eight. So we'll roll our 16 dice, and at that range, we're over 18 inches. I'm looking for fives and sixes. And that's a moderately right-ish roll. Four. Four hits. So I shall sweep them up, uh -huh. and uh, you can... I'll uh, grab four then. You can do it yourself. So I'm, I'm in the forest. Now, you're in the forest, so you've got two teams, so we roll two dice for each team. Yep. You've got, you got your machine gun team and your rifle team. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in light cover. Yep. So fours and fives are shock, sixes are killed. All right. So, so let's roll the golden dice. For the machine gun. Machine gun. A is shock. One point of shock. Yep. And, and the rifle team. For the team rifle team, is nothing. Nothing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the smashing little tokens here uh, to represent shock, which yep. Justin's just done, yep. uh, because so. they show up pretty well on the camera. Um, you can use anything to represent shock. A lot of people use micro dice, a lot of people make their own little markers, or um, War of Games produce those lovely little rifles, helmets on rifles, yes. which look really good. So you yep. can find whatever you like to represent them. One of the best things I've found mm. to use is uh, a buddy of mine years ago made me little discs with oh, yeah. numbers on numbers them on. that you can yeah. just rotate and set yeah. beside the unit. They look really good, actually. I've done some of those uh, for my Stalingrad setup where I've got um, wounded figures on them or dead figures on them, and the little dial has got the number on and mm -hmm. you can put it with a unit and it just gives a nice vi visual yeah. representation but for the sake of the camera we're using bright orange dots so you guys at home can see what's going on yep right um i've got another three, yeah, left. three left and then you want to do with it not really uh after <laughs> after that what i've done so far being wholly useless i think <laughs> i'm i think i'm inclined to keep my powder dry and let you have a go right okay so five dice plus the magic red dice mm -hmm. into the box of doom. Ooh, that's lovely. Ooh. So two more chain of command points. Two more chain of command points. Mm. A four, a two, a one, and a three. Four, three, two, one. That's rather lovely. Mm. And sequential. Yes. So I'm going to use my three because I'm going to activate my tank. Yeah. And I'm going to have them go like the clappers. Right. Well, you've got a choice with a tank. You can move one D6. Mm -hmm. Fast tank, so you're adding two pips per dice, so they do shift a bit. You, you can move 1d6 in movement and fire the main gun. You can move 2d6 and fire the secondary armament, which in this case is the coaxial MG. Mm. Or you can move 3d6 and, sh and fire with nothing. Yeah. So My uh, thinking is three dice, because from where he is, yeah. he really needs to boogie. He, yeah, he does. Let's go for it. So, right. 5, 4, 3. Again, sequential. Mm -hmm. uh, 12, so that is, but add 6. 18 inches. 18 inches. So oh, the word zoom right. springs to mind. Panzer four. Now that does worry me. So now I'm just sitting up nicely behind the fence here. So if you come up to that culvert, mm. I might get a little bit of a line on you, mm. which is fine. <laughs> it also means that I might be able to get something into anybody else who goes into that uh, orchard there. It does, which now does worry me of course but i'm glad i didn't drop the anti-tank gun over here because i wouldn't be able to see <laughs> right okay so what uh, else so you that got? And that's done mm. so i could do a three and get mm. my other unit on mm. with the junior leader or i could do the three and bring the other tank on you could do yeah and the other tank i don't really think i need him just yet i think i'll keep my powder dry on him mm -hmm. of course i need a bit of movement with him so actually yeah i'm gonna go with the tank just because you've got the road blocked, mm -hmm. and the sooner I can get these activated and True. up into position is what I need. So he's going to sit 
right about there. Okay, no target for him at the moment. He could fire if there was a target, but he can't. This is one of the things that Chain of Command is designed to do. Mm. It's designed to get you thinking. Now, there's options there with a two and a one. Yes, you can add them together and bring the tank on. Mm. The other alternative, on a two, Justin could have fired down from the hill, and on a one, he could have bought his 50mm mortar on and added the fire in there, yeah. really start revving up those guys down there. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of options. He could have added the two and the three together yeah. and bought a squad on over there, or he could have bought them on on a two mm -hmm. and bought the 50mm mortar on as well. So it's how you use those combination of dice to best achieve what you're looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. Makes you think. Right. Well, uh, the sergeant's hearing mm. a lack of gunfire at the yeah. minute, so I'm going to use the four to bring on right. one oh, of my senior oh, leaders. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, actually he, really good. So he, the man at the back. Yeah, he's just going to stand right behind the forest, out of sight of you. And he's got a nine-inch shout range. Good to see a bit of uh, a heroism there from a German leader, cowardly standing at the back of a forest <laughs> and shouting, you guys at the front do all the work. So presumably fire, fire. Uh, with his nine inch fire range. Now, I'll give you a little bit of advice here. Uh -huh. If you brought him on with the squad, uh -huh. he could get them all to fire, but he could also add his two dice using the machine gun air rule. So that would up your firepower with him controlling mm. that fire. However, there would be a risk that he might get hit. I like having him just... You like the cowardly approach. I'd have okay, said uh, right. It's <laughs> tactical. Not cowardly, tactical. That's a new word for the day to get today, kids. Right, all right, so... Let's, so. He's going he's gonna to shout at the guys. Yeah. Fight, eight, fight. Eight dice with the machine gun Turn and six there. dice with the rifles. Fourteen dice. There's one point of shock on them. No effect. If it was two points of shock, that would reduce those dice by one. Seven, eight, <clears throat> and then six more. So four... And two makes 14. Fives and sixes? Fives and Ooh, sixes because of the range. So there's four. four. The oh. range is always what tells us what we need to hit. Yeah. The cover is taken into account now when we uh, we roll our results dice. So we've got, again, we've got two teams there. I'll roll for the one on the right. Two on snake eyes, Didn't nothing. Care. And the one on the left. Shock. Five is one point of shock, so uh, let's pop that delicious marker down there. Mm -hmm. So we're trading handbags at dawn there, really, just uh, uh, not really doing much. But that, I think, ends your phase. It does. And it's it on does. to my more important phase. <laughs> right. Roll the dice. See, uh, Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Triple four. Mm -hmm. Well, the important thing is that I've got a one to yeah. act activate sergeant aubergine and the, the engineers <laughs> yeah. but i've also got a three yeah because i don't like that tank because he's annoying me <laughs> and if i if sergeant aubergine drives up with the engineers he's likely to get shredded yeah this is why i brought the other one on because it's it's critical that i get that big firepower down early before you have time to like block lines of sight throwing meat shields into the way meat shields yeah, yeah i know you hit the word uh yeah um but it's a uh yeah you're right though but what i what i really want to do is block your line of sight so my engineers can work mm -hmm. so you're quite right in this situation meat shield's the right word decisions decisions right well i've got to do something so i've got to counter you so mm -hmm. in the wood my oh. 25 millimeter anti-tank gun appears uh -huh. with uh with their leader there now they're appearing on a three which is the uh, the junior leader. Mm -hmm. So we'll put these to one side for the moment, and they're going to fire at you. That is partially obscured target, uh -huh. so I need to roll the dice. Seven to hit, but because the leader is using both of his command initiatives to lay that gun like Napoleon did, mm -hmm. clearly a relative, I need a six. So we'll roll two dice and see what happens. Five. Denied. Oh, dear. Yeah, dear me. Right, Shoo. okay. So uh, it, that goes off into the blue. Um, right, now, what do I do next? I've got a one, mm -hmm. and I've got a four. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, I want to get my van moving, so I'm going to roll two D6 okay. for the engineers. Go for it. And allow them to jump out at the end of it, because it takes... Ten inches? Yeah, ten inches. Not bad. Not bad. And it allows them to jump out. That's and actually pretty good for you because it's keeping you just That's just exactly where I wanted to be. Yeah, tank. that's right. Because I'm a bit <laughs> worried, to say the least, about those two tanks. Um, I'm not going to use the fours. Mm -hmm. No point at this point in time. There's nothing... Uh, yeah, I am, actually. I'm going to do what you did. 
Mr. Clever Clogs, uh -huh. and bring this guy on into the orchard and get them to return fire up the hill. Yep. And again, I've only got one uh, point. Is he of with shot. the squad? Uh, yeah, he is, but we okay. don't have that machine. I'm not. Cowardly. Machine gewehr. Oh yeah. We don't have that machine gewehr bonus because we're not uh, we're not Germans. We're not trained in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but he is going to get them to fire uh, and see a lot. It, uh, fire a lot with their light machine guns. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, three and three. So I'm much happier about that. So Quite you roll your dice. All right, just let me clear the tray. So first up, three on the machine gun. Yeah. Ooh, one dead. One dead ah. and one shock. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep we'll keep that locked in our memory banks. And then on the other one is one, one shot. shot. Ow. So we'll add that one shot there. We'll put one shot there. So it's one off the machine gun, but yep. it might be your junior leader. So ah, roll the dice. Okay. One dead means a, a roll of one. No, Three. it's not. So it's a regular Take regular one dude. man off. And uh, there we go. Is that first hands? <laughs> he earned me 20 reichs. Right. Brilliant. Well, uh, Ah, first blood, uh, first blood to the gallant French defenders, mm -hmm. uh, and that is the end of my phase. I'm not using the other two fours. I could bring on another senior leader, but no point. Yeah. All right. So I'm rolling my six dice again. Ah. Mm. Okay, I can work with this. Yeah. So that's another point for my chain of command dice. Yeah, which is good because you're accelerating away. I've only got one chain of command point. You got four. Mm -hmm. So again, you've got four, three, two, and one and one. Yeah. So, hmm. I think I'm going to use my three mm -hmm. to activate the tank. Mm -hmm. And so if he fires from stationary, is there mm. any bonus there? No. No? But All right. So he'll move for one dice. Yeah. Just to try and get a better line on what he he's looking at. Uh, He's just going to shimmy around where he is. He's not really going to go too far. Okay. So he gets a one. Well. So he really is shimmying around. <laughs> there we go. But he's just going to bring himself a little bit further across to obscure himself a little more. And he's going to fire his main gun in at your anti-tank gun. Right, fine. Well, um, 20 mil cannon, not the biggest gun in the world. But the good thing is it's rapid firing. So to reflect that, we give it extra dice. Mm. HE dice get six. So bang, 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 always hitting on four, five, or six. Uh-huh. And? And? Ah. Oh, two hits. Two hits. Right, oh, so okay. I roll for two. My uh, anti-tanker mm -hmm. is in cover because it's in the orchard. Mm -hmm. It also gets an additional level of cover because it's got a gun shield. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's up to the HE reduces it by one. So I'm actually treated there as in one level better than I am, rather than the two levels. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're rolling a dice. That counts, therefore, as I'm in light cover. That gives it, so I treat as light cover. So we roll two dice and no effect. Wow. So a lot of high explosive shells whizzing past me. Mm -hmm. But there we go. OK. That's OK. Hmm. I need to check a thing. Range of his shout. OK. He's just out. Well, he can't activate them again anyway. Mm. You can only activate any unit once in a turn, in a phase. Mm. Okay, uh, let's see. I will make a three yep. and activate my junior leader in this squad yep. to have him remove a little bit of shock. Okay, now he could take two points of shock off, uh, which would mean that none of them could fire, because that, that would be his whole turn. Or he could take one point of shock off and then get the whole squad to fire. He'll take one point off and get the whole squad That's to it, fire. That's it, because you've only got one point of shock on each team, so that doesn't reduce dice. You don't add them yep. together. You just So, so eight, you've got eight, eight dice and six dice. And three. <coughs> and... That's it. Hmm. I'm just now, considering who's now the there's an interesting point here. If you haven't taken shock off, he could have got the rifleman to fire at them. Yeah. And he could have got the machine gun to fire at them. Yeah. Um, no, I think as it stands, I'm just going to have everybody fire at them. Well, I don't the think th those guys can see it because of, or oh, not all of them anyway. Aye, so fair point. Actually, mm. I'll just have everybody shoot oop, down at these. Try it. If I don't, and not, not the tree down to give better line of sight. That's <laughs> a great idea. Right. So, so everything into that squad. Fourteen dice. Yeah. Yep. And uh, one, two, three, three hits. Mm. The Germans are 
Off form. No, four. All right, four hits. Well done. I'll take it. Congratulations. So I'll roll for that. Uh, so I'm rolling two dice for the team on the right, uh -huh. which is two points of shock, I'll and two it. dice for the team on the left, Oh, which dead, is a dead shot. and shock. Now, do you hit the junior leader? I do not. You do not. I thought you did there. Right, so one dead. We'll take that off, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and I need Three to put shock. two points of shock down for that team, uh -huh. and another one for that. So you can see that that's starting to whittle down my effectiveness. Yes. Hmm. Good shooting. Okay, so that's... A mm. five and two threes are used. I've mm -hmm. got a one and a four, and a four left. Yeah. I think I'm going to use my one to bring on my mortar. Team. Yeah, why not? But where to bring them on is the question. Well, you you hit more readily if you've got line of sight, but you don't need line of sight as long as somebody else has got line of sight. So All if right. you've got line of sight, you hit on a four, five, or six. Uh -huh. If you haven't got line of sight, you hit on a five or six. I see. Um, in that case... It's not the best weapon in the world, and the Germans stopped using it because they got fed up carrying them around for very little benefit. But at this stage of the war... I'll hide them behind the forest. Yeah. So roll me two dice. The good thing about them is they do reduce cover. So if you've got a unit behind uh, in light cover like that, it does kind of double the chances of killing people. Uh, my target is... So these guys can see them. Yeah. So oh. you can fire at them. Yeah. Right. May as well so pop it on their heads. Oh, you if might get as lucky. well. Five and six. Two five, hits. Five. Right. So we're... Um, High explosive doom. Absolutely. But they don't care. But they, yeah, absolutely. Need Charmed life, and they need to have the way things are going. I need to speak to my munitions plants. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's you then, is it? You're not using uh, the four, or are you? I've got the four. Well, I've got mm. this guy here, mm. but there's nobody else really around him. No, the options you've got there, he mm. could spend one command initiative moving up into the forest and then mm. take off the two points of shot, but that then that puts him at risk. Yeah. And I know you're I mean, adverse to that, being cowardly. Yeah, but so they're, they're not really in the <coughs> ship just yet. No, need no. That. You're not in desperate straits, so yeah. I think it's perfectly legitimate to be cowardly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Tactical. <laughs> Tactical, sorry, that's the word. Oh, no! Oh. oh. Uh, right. So, two sixes uh -huh. means I have the next phase. Yeah. People say double phase. It's not, of course, because as you can see, one of them's a five, which yeah. is good. So I've actually only got a three and a one. So it's um, to, in order to get the next phase, you actually don't get much of a phase this time. Mm -hmm. But having got the next phase, yeah, you can I'm going to take a risk. Cheeky. I'm going to run up with my engineers. Ah. Well, <laughs> three dice to run, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they get up to the bridge. Yeah. And uh, they can't start doing their stuff until next turn. Mm -hmm. They do take a point of shock because they run. So yeah. we'll add that on. Um, but it doesn't stop them doing their evil magic. Yes. Uh, right, on the three, the anti-tank gun is going to fire. Now, as we know, uh, I need a six, because the leader's putting both of his initiatives in. Oof. This is the worst anti-tank gun in the entire French army. <laughs> but fortunately, I do have the next phase. Yes, so you I'll do. roll the magic dice once again. So no five. Threes this time, but you can make one. One on my chain of command dice. Mm -hmm. the, on the one, the engineers are going to do their magic with the culvert. Now, it's yeah. a small culvert. I need to get a cumulative total of six. Mm -hmm. So how long it takes me to get to the total of six is how many phases I need. Oh. So I'm going to roll a one. And it's a three, three. So they're halfway through their job. So I'm going to pop this little dice here. So they're halfway there living on a that. prayer? They're living on a prayer would be absolutely right, Bond. Yeah. Right. So... But this is this is that terrible meat shield moment yeah. where I need to protect them. So coming on nine inches from there, mm -hmm. we're going to go here. Now, what I am going to do is something that you probably, being evil, mm -hmm. wouldn't expect, is I'm going to start firing my light machine guns at your tank in an attempt to drive it off by okay. firing at the vision ports ah. and scaring the driver to bits. I see. How many dice do I roll when doing that? None. However, you do. You roll your armor value because okay. I can't penetrate, right. but I might get a morale effect. Okay. So roll me two d six for the first time. So you need to get five or six. And right. Six. So you completely ignore it. And Brent. because I've got two machine guns, I'm doing it with the other one. Okay. So you roll again, uh, and fives. you can completely ignore it. Now, what are the likelihoods there? Well, one of the results that we could get, if you've got no saves, yeah. you get a reaction to that. Uh -huh. One of the results is you completely ignore it, as you uh -huh. already have done. The other result is you get annoyed with me uh -huh. and have to engage me as a target. Oh, I see. Or the other result is that you might 
reverse away. Yeah. And you're fairly close to the table edge. Yeah. <laughs> so well, so uh, it's worth, it's one of those tactics that um, infantry could use in extremis, mm -hmm. firing their machine guns at the vision ports in an attempt to scare the life out of the tank driver. Because whilst we all think, oh, I'm completely safe in there, mm -hmm. if you've got bullets going kapow, kapow, kapow all around there yeah. and bits of metal splashing off into your yeah, face, you're, you're certainly going, no, you're no, going don't, don't like this. I don't, don't like this. this, yeah. So that's a. Uh, a five, a one, and a two used. Right, yeah, and I think that's... Uh, and you've got a four and a two left. I have got a four and a two. Now, this senior leader here is going to take two points to shock off, one off each team, mm -hmm. to keep them effective. Yep. And he's got, being a senior leader, he's got three command initiatives, so he's used two to rally. He's going to use the third one to get them to fire. Now, mm -hmm. they're down a rifleman, so they're not quite as pokey, but so they still get 17 shots. dice. 17? Oh, yeah, because yeah, he's with them now, isn't he? Yeah, uh, sorry. As they don't was... get 17. I lied. 15. <laughs> right. I've got to try and cheat where I can to beat this guy. This, <laughs> 15. Right. There we go. Actually, I could have just left one there, couldn't I? Yeah. Oh. And uh, good job I didn't. Right. So we've got one, two, four. Four hits. Okay, so it's two and two. Two and two. Yeah, okay, we can go with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. So for the machine gun team, uh, double sixes, Ooh, two dead. Two dead. And for the rifle team, is another dead. So I have to roll three dice to see if oh, it's my leader. What a shame. No, you roll one dice, and if you get one, two, or three, it's okay. the leader. Uh, it's three. your leader. So in a way, good job, your cowardly senior leader stayed at the back there. So, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's dead. Let's roll. When we have special people, leaders, we roll for them. For On a one, he would be dead, but he's rolled a two. Uh, a two or a three means he's knocked down, mm -hmm. wounded, and he can't be activated until the end of the turn. Uh, so that's quite bad because it means he's the guy who should be rallying then. He can't be doing that. Uh, all right, so my machine gun team yep. how many guys were in that there were three but so now because it's more. a leader you don't because you can count one of them as being that so you've still got one machine gun ah, but i had already lost one guy from it you did but remember the leader got a hit took three wounds two guys die yeah two left in the machine gun team okay well the machine gun team is gone if that yeah. is the case then. uh right. no here's a question for you yeah the shock that's on there does that amalgamate into the other squad now no it disappears you can't shock dead people Surprising that. You can try, <laughs> but it doesn't work. <laughs> right, so, okay, so now we're going to roll for what we call mm -hmm. bad things happen. Oh dear. And to do that, we're going to go to the main chain of command rule book, uh -huh. and you're going to roll the dice. First of all, I'm going to put on my spectacles so I know what the hell's happening. <laughs> uh, you're going to roll the dice for yep. your uh, uh, leader being wounded, so junior leader wounded. Very simple table. Uh, for a four. A four. Junior leader wounded means you take one point off your force morale. Hooray. Okay, so I and, go 98. And the team wiped out. We roll for that as well because you've lost your machine gun team. Oh, dear. For a six. No, not oh, dear. Good. Right. So that's another one point off. So your force morale is starting to be whittled down. Yes. The whole idea of chain of command is you don't have to kill them all. What you're trying to do is break your enemy's will to fight. Mm. So even if the enemy comes on and he's got tanks and you haven't, don't shoot at the tanks. Focus on destroying his morale by killing off the infantry support. That was yep. a standard Soviet ta uh, German tactic against yep. the Soviets later in the war. Right, okie dokie. So, um, is that your phase? That's my phase. All right, so, so on to mine. I was quite pleased with that. That was a pretty good phase for me. Yep. If only I'd got your tank responding. Well. So that's been single six is binned up five, five on the chain of command dice. Happy I have this little extra red dice. It's yeah, yeah, it here. does not make a difference, doesn't it? Having that, especially when you've got a large force like this, this German four squads, mm. one team, two tanks. It's a lot of troops to keep yeah, going. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use one of my threes on my tank. Yep. And from where he is. Wow. Now, can I drive over like hedges and stuff in my tank? You can drive over hedges in your tank. There is a chance that you might bog in. I'll take the risk. So he's going to move on two mm -hmm. dice yep. so he can still fire his machine gun. Yeah, so roll two dice and you take... Nice. Right, so you take the lower one off because you're crossing an obstacle. Uh -huh. And well, so you go six inches. inches. 
You squash a chicken. Uh, <laughs> all right, so he is literally just going to drive yep. up and through <laughs> right. to here. Yeah. And he's going to have a blat with his machine gun yep. on he's, your engineers. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the interesting thing is because the anti-tank gun's within four inches, those hits are going to be shared. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, although these guys are in cover, these guys are in the open, so you can actually focus on them. I will focus Six on that. Six dice. Uh, machine gun, though. Uh, yeah, six dice for the machine gun. It just doesn't reduce cover. Oh, right. Sorry, I thought machine guns were eight dice. Uh, they are, but because you're inside a metal box looking out of letterbox, gotcha. you don't roll as many dice because you don't have quite such a good view of what's going on in the world. Fair enough. Let's see what we get. Uh, one. Two. Two? Yeah, yeah okay. two hits. <clears throat> Could be nasty for me, actually. Uh, well, one dead. Uh, one fine. So, fine. ah! As they say in France, when, <laughs> when killed. Right. All right, uh, so that's one of my threes done. Yeah. I think it's time to get a little bit cagey here. So I'm going to activate one of my other... Yeah. My other three... Yeah. ...is going to activate a junior leader and yeah. a squad. Yeah. And what they're going to do... Yeah. ...is they're going to come in from here six inches. Like the Buffalo Girls. Yeah. And because they're doing it with him, yeah. they're going to be going tactical. So we grab one of yeah. these handy-dandy yeah. little markers. Yeah. So, interesting, what you're doing, really putting pressure on me now. I've, uh, I've got to try and defend right the way across my frontage. I've got the tank coming down the road, I've got the tank coming through the farm, I've got the guys shooting at me from up on the hill, and now I've got more people coming around that side. Yeah, this, well, my, my thinking is I'm, I'm trying to distract you. Too well, many targets. this is creating an issue for me as a commander. I can't deal with all those threats at once, or can I? Well, it's maybe going to force you to bring in some of your troops as That's well. That's right. The dice will tell. They will. Now, I still have a two and a one left. You do. So, uh, what would be good here? Well, you might as well use your mortar, I'd have thought. Well, I was uh, thinking either I can move the mortar or I can get that other tank up and on the move. You could do. And if I get him moving, mm -hmm. that puts more pressure to your centre, mm. which is what I think I'm going to do. So, he's going to move for three dice. What a nasty, nasty man you are, Justin. <laughs> Uh, so that becomes... That becomes 8, 14. 14? <coughs> I'll take that. That's not a, a yeah, bad move. Um, yeah. So, let's see. 14 inches. Yeah. I'm always slightly disappointed with the 6-inch move and things like that. I like to see things, especially faster tanks, zipping about the table a bit. It mm -hmm. just gives you that feel of the tactical ability to to shift the emphasis of the attack. Mm -hmm. You know, one minute you're attacking here and I'm having to defend here. Yeah. The next minute you're zooming around there. I well, love that sort of it's flow. It's making that meat shield a little redundant and it's also taking that that lovely minefield you sat down and just yeah. making it a yeah. little bit redundant, taking, yeah. going over the obstacle you've set for me. That's right. I'm so pleased I had that though. That was a really good two point spend. Yeah, yeah, definitely handy because it is, mm. it is literally just locked me off and forced <coughs> me to make this yeah. big sweep. Yeah. Right, so. One Actually, of the things I could have had, um, being French, as a support option was some wine bottles full of petrol. Oh. Because there's obviously quite a few wine bottles hanging around France. Of course. And I would have loved now to be able to go out there and um, give you a, a Gallic cocktail. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I didn't choose it. Right. So, roll the golden dice. <clears throat> Ooh. Zuta Laws. That's not what I wanted. I mean, it's two on my chain of command dice, which is jammed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's three. That's disastrous. I haven't got a four to activate the engineers. I haven't, if I had a six, I could at least interrupt your turn. Mm -hmm. I can't activate the engineers. I'm going to have to try and... Pop the tank. Pop that tank. <laughs> right, I've got one three yeah. with which I'm going to try and hit the tank. I, you're in the open now. I need five, but because he's using both of his yep. command points, I need four. How bad can this man be? <laughs> it lands. Right, it lands. <laughs> I thought it was going to be really bad. Right, now, I've hit, yes. so what do we do? I've got a, a, an AP, armor-piercing strike of five. You've only got an armor of two. Mm -hmm. So I'm rolling five dice, and I need fives and sixes to hit, to, to penetrate. So I've got one, two, two of them. Oof. So you've got an armor of two, so you need to roll two dice. You need fives and sixes to, to reduce the effect of that oh, save, come on. those hits. So, five and okay, a four. so it's a net one hit. Now, what we do there is we go in the, the rules and we've got a table there for uh, vehicles. 
fire against tanks. It's a net one hit. We roll a d6 to see what the effect of that is. For a three? It's a three. It's a shock. One point of shock, so we'll pop a little point of shock next to the tank. Uh -huh. But the commander panics, and the vehicle can't be activated in the next phase. Ooh, that's good for Ooh, you. Ooh, that is such a jammy result. I needed three clear net hits to actually blow you up or destroy yeah. the tank. But as it is, you not being able to activate in the next phase may just buy me the time I need to get this blooming culvert blown up and get back in my noddy van. <laughs> right, OK, so I'm living on a prayer. <laughs> well, you're hanging on there, shoestring. Yeah, <laughs> you'll go. That, oh, you're done? That I'm done. OK. I'm not, uh, oh, you yeah, know, I've got another three. Yeah. I'm yeah shoot, was... I'm, as I'm doing so well, I'm going to shoot up the hill. Go ahead. Um, with my 15 dice, uh, four. Mm-hmm. Eight, twelve, one, two, three, and uh, I'm really looking to punish these, or I could shoot across in the open. Ah, uh, but they've moved tactically. So light I, cover. I'm going to try and really bully these guys into submission. Yeah. Oh, you've got a fair bet there. It's a magic roll. Six hits. All on the one team. All on the one team. So having destroyed one team, this is where I can really... Uh, yeah, hammer at home. Hammer at home, yeah, exactly. Oh. And this, if I can... Oh, pathetic. Two, two points, points of shock. shock. Well, it's adding up. How many men you got there now? Uh, one, two, three, three four, five. five. Yeah, um, well, if, the junior officer. if I can get another three points of shock on there, five men with six points of shock will pin them. Mm -hmm. It will mean their firing is reduced to half effect. They've already lost the machine gun. That unit has been really degraded, mm -hmm. uh, but I was really keen to, uh, to do a bit more damage than that. Yeah. Ho-hum. It's, it's your evil go, mate. Well, I, I. <laughs> uh, I can work with that. Now you can. The problem is, once you've got two sixes, remember, that the red count. dice doesn't count for sixes, count. no. So. But with what I have there, the two, the three, the four, the five, so the five gives me extra chain of command. It does. Ooh, which um, is, could be nice. That can allow you to do a lot of things, you know, interrupt, jump forward, your, your uh, jump up points, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of magic stuff. But yeah. So when can I use that? As soon as you like, any time you like. All right, well, the first thing I'm mm. going to do is mm. I'm going to activate mm. Junior Officer. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be this squad. Yeah. So they're going to be moving just regularly for two dice. Right. Which way are you going? Are you going over the fence? I'm going over, over the hedge. Right. To go over a hedge, you can't tactically climb over a hedge. Mm -hmm. It's a bit obvious. You can't run over a hedge unless you are Shergar. So you always move normally. Two dice, and you take the lower one off, just as we saw earlier. Grand. So you go six inches. Great. That's fine by me. Yep. So for six inches... But, and of course, that isn't tactical now, but they're, in, they're now in light cover. So as we discussed at the very outset of the game, having that jump off point in the open, but relatively close to cover, did allow you to come on tactically. You've snuck onto the table and you're now getting a good position going round the outside. Mm. And now mm. I'm going to use my six on my chain of command yeah. to move my jump off point. Uh, now, the jump off point has to be at least six inches behind another unit. So at the moment, uh, moving that jump off point wouldn't give you a pay. lot of good. Then I will so, keep it for yeah. now. For yeah, next keep time. that one up the, the metaphorical sleeve. Yes. Uh, or, or literal. Now, if I activate my senior commander, can mm. he order a unit to move back? Yes. He will activate mm. and he will have them move back and join him. Yeah, good idea. So what you're doing is pulling a spent unit out the line. So roll me. You need to roll for that okay. movement. They've got three points of shock, so that takes three inches off the movement. Mm -hmm. So roll a couple of dice. If you roll three, they stay where they are, but if uh, you... It. Eight. So they'll go five. Yeah. That's so that's fine. perfectly fine. That gets them back. I can see up to four inches into woodland. Um, so the fact you've gone back behind it means I can no longer target them. Yeah. They, um, no, they, unfortunately, <laughs> this guy's knocked down, so he's still inside the woods. He is, but they are moving back under control. They're not routing, so they'll carry him back with them in I the see. spirit of some of the best films. I see. Uh, so but, I will just get but him But he, he's still there. dazed, tired yep. and emotional. Yeah, and then now that they've joined the commander, mm. he will use his other two points to drop two points of drop shock. Drop two points of shock. Yeah, great idea. And then for mm. my final trick, I have a two left over. You do. I'm going to bring in a fresh unit. Oh, what a man. So we have our machine gun team. Yeah, and these go. guys can 
Go within six. Can arrive spitting death down on my uh, defenders in the orchard. And then I have my other six guys here. Within <coughs> six. I'll just line them up through the woods here. Okay. <coughs> And everybody can see. And then there. The there leader. he is, the junior leader there, the NCO. Yep. So just a very nice quick trade out on the lines. Yeah, yeah. Great. Nice move. Very Fire. Roman. Pull a spent unit back, put the new one in. Yeah. So 14 magical dice, uh, heaping on the pain. And uh, obviously, as we can see, we're outside, uh, just outside 18 inches. So it's fives and sixes to hit. Under 18, fours, fives, and sixes. Mm -hmm. Something that we haven't mentioned is that these are very modern weapons. The whole table is within range. Yeah. One foot in this is about 40 yards. This is only about 250 yards by a couple of hundred yards. Yeah. Right. All right. Away you go, sir. Oh, ah, four hits. That, do you know, that looked better than it That's was. Five, five hits. hits. Well, it was better than <laughs> it was. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. Well, I'll to put... Um, because I'm in cover, I get the choice of where to put the, the odd one. So two and two, but the odd one I'm going to put on the right-hand unit because mm -hmm. they haven't. So three dice on them. Uh -huh. one, one, one and a two is nothing. Oof. I'll keep rolling those dice, actually. And uh, three. nothing, yeah. nothing. So we uh, live to fight another day. This is fair enough. Mr. Moriarty. And that is all of mine. End of your phase. Done. So thank the Lord. Oh. That's roughness. You get Tina command points, but... I do. It's not doing me any favours, is it, a rotten swine? However, the important thing is, I have got a four. Mm -hmm. And this guy is within nine inches of the engineers. The yeah. sergeant there. Get on with the blowing of the cold out, you fools. <laughs> Very good French. <laughs> but he says it in French. <laughs> so we'll roll the dice. They've already got three. Can they complete setting the charges? They can. Yes. Uh, boom. Le Culvert est destroyed. <laughs> so uh, we've completed the first part of our cunning plan. Thank goodness. I didn't think we were going to get that far. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the Culvert is destroyed. Imagine lots of destroyed stuff flying through the air. Yeah, um, so this, this goes boom. Yeah. Right. So uh, the, he will also say to these guys, fire. But he's actually within, he's with them. Mm -hmm. So he can take one point of shock off for his yeah. second command initiative. And then get them to fire. 15? He could, or but I think it's more likely he's going to uh -huh. not take the shock off uh -huh. and uh -huh. shout uh -huh. across uh -huh. to the anti tank. So we can see the importance of the senior leaders when the going gets tough. Mm -hmm. He's the man in there getting things happening. So he's going to get them to fire up the magic hill. Mm -hmm. So three, six, nine, 12, 15. Mm -hmm is one two three four five five hits are on but you're gonna to have to split that so again yeah. you get to choose because you're in cover so you're probably going to put three hits on the rifleman and two on the machine gun because you want to Bingo. protect that machine gun so two on the machine gun yeah it's one shot shock fine so i'll pop that down there and rifleman oh, oh. two dead and one shock i like that roll for your leader uh, leader hits. gets hit and the leaders hit roll the dice to see what happens ah get in there four four okay he's wounded yeah. but he's he's not knocked down he's still awake yeah. uh, but his uh command level is reduced to a level of one uh -huh. so we roll the dice more importantly on there, three, three drops by one. The force morale tumbling down to six. Wah. Worrying for the Germans because if it gets to four, they lose that red dice as well as losing another one of their chain of command dice. As the force morale gets to the bottom end, mm -hmm. they start losing command dice as the cohesion of the unit disappears. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing to say here. Schweinhund. Well, that's a polite way of putting it. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to fire this gun. Now, he is not yeah. getting the benefit of the leader firing it um, because the, the senior leader's shouting over, saying, yeah. fire the gun! But he's French, not German. Fire le gun. Tire le gun, I believe the word would be. And... <laughs> <clears throat> you missed! 
Well, there we go. Uh, this is okay. what happens when you rush a European. <laughs> this is what happens when you employ this lunatic to fire a gun. He's obviously a sort of fireman who's been brought in rather than a, rather than an anti-tank yeah, yeah. gunner. Um, wrong uniform. Uh, now, I've got two left. Oh, a two. Okay. Uh, I can deploy a squad. You could. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I could deploy a squad on this road and shoot you up. You could. Because I've got to try and counter that. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm way down here. You could drop off way up there. You could if you want. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep my powder dry. All right. Uh, am I? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I can't afford to. I've, I've got to do something about this. Yeah, yeah. So these guys are coming out into the road here. Yeah. And they're going to let loose with their... Uh, so shots nice from the death. house coming down to this squad. Yeah, from the uh, road just outside the house. And uh, 14 dice, 2, 4, uh, 16 dice, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16. So long range, 5s and 6s. And that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 hits. Uh, now, you get to pick because I'm in the I open. I get to pick because you're in the open. So I'm going to put three on the machine gun and two on the rifle team. Now the difference is this is a target in the open. So ones and twos are nothing. Threes and fours are shock. Fives and sixes are mm -hmm. dead. So, for so the machine let's gun. big high roll, please. Oh, One, two, two shock three. on the machine gun team. I'll take that. And uh, yeah, and uh, roll two dice for there. To another two shock on the rifle team. So start piling Certainly. on the shock. Yep. So. One, two, three. Four, and that's five, me two. done. That is me done. Um, right, back to myself then. And now for my cunning plan. Hopefully, depending mm. on what I roll here. Yeah. Uh, I can work with that. I can work with that. Hmm. So this is Yeah, that's a, that's a good roll. In fact, the, whilst you've got a six in there, the good thing about that roll is it's got quite a lot of... It's got at least one one in there. Now, mm -hmm. having a one in there and some twos does allow you to do a lot of adding up and taking... Well, not taking yep. away, but making numbers that you want to make. Yeah, well, the the first thing I'm going to do, mm -hmm. this squad's going to activate on a three. Yeah. So the junior, junior officer yep. is going to take off point of shot. Yeah. And then he's going to order the entire squad yep. to run. And I mean full pelt run. 3d6 to run, but each team will take another point of shot at the end of it. Not I am okay with that you because are okay. of my plan. Where are you going? I'm going <laughs> out this way. I thought you might, you rotter. <laughs> right. So let's see how far we go. Uh, that 13. will be 13 inches. That I will take. Yeah. I will definitely take. Cool. I'm a bit worried because now. Because from where they are, yeah. the 13. Oh, yeah. that's perfect. Right up there into cover. Yeah, I'm getting worried there now. This this is where we can see the importance of that patrol phase and how you actually manoeuvring to gain that flank has really put you in a quite a strong position now because actually the culvert that I've destroyed right at the front may have been an easier task than the big culvert at the back, which is going to take a task roll of 12. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be messing about there for a lot longer. You see, now I'm up to about mm. here. Hiding behind this, which yeah. is really nice. Uh, however, I do mm. take my extra two points of shot. You do, you which do, you do. Put yeah. One here, yeah. and one here. Uh, my guys are just off the edge of the camera there. They might get a little further up, but now I'm going to mm. spend that chain of command dice to move my deployment zone up. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, 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 cheeky, cheeky. So it Very has to be nice. six inches back, yeah? Yep, six inches back so and, uh, and up to 18 inches. So you can, uh, yep, just bring it up to there. Yeah. So the great thing is there, using the chain of command ice to consolidate on ground already mm -hmm. won, and he could, if he wanted to, bring on another squad immediately in that position, and all of a sudden he's conducted a really, really successful outflanking position. Mm -hmm. The only risk being is there's a lot of open ground there to cover, and you know, open ground spells death in these rules. True, but uh, I'm going to make a three. Yeah. And then that will let me use my other junior officer yeah. to come in at this point within six. Yeah. Tactical if you want. Or you can just fire. Just come on and fire. Oh, I'm just going to come on and lay into you. Because yeah. Because now 
I believe I've managed to get There's myself. a lovely quote. I've just been up to Arnhem recently, and there's a lovely quote by an Irish guards, a tank commander. They said, if in doubt, lash out. And you think, OK, that's, <laughs> that's not a bad motto for a soldier yeah, yeah. to have. So, uh, so now right. I've got my squad, but yeah. the key is yeah. I'm within that 18 inches. Oh, you rotter, sir. So I hate a man who knows the rules. Um, <laughs> It's usually my only chance of victory, right? So that's uh, 14 dice. Well, I don't think all of them can see because it's only the men in the front round that can see. But I'm going to give you the machine gun team and three other guys. So that's do. 11 dice. I'll and you're that. hitting on fours, fives and sixes because you're in close range now. Oh, I'm under pressure. That should hurt those guys. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So ones and twos. And threes. And don't threes. Count. Good thing there is you roll a lot of ones and twos and threes, mate. Fours. Four. Four there. Four. That's fine. Right. So, uh, machine gun team on the left. Two shock. Machine gun team on the right. One, one dead. dead. Right. So, two shock, yep. one dead. Is it your leader? Oh, we could check for that, couldn't we? Might spoil my day. No. no that's fine. No, no. Still, that, that was worth it because there's so much there for you Lovely to do move. now. Really nice move. Mm -hmm. That's one of those um, one of those moves that gives a great example about how using that chain of command dice can really, uh, uh, combined with keeping a reserve off the table, can can actually turn yeah. the table the, turn the tables on the whole battle. That doesn't make sense. That's gibberish, but you know what I mean. Right. I've still got two twos left. No. So guess what? How bad can this get? Go on. Uh, the commander. <laughs> yeah, the commander. Is... He's coming in. Oh. He's yeah. got six inches, He's, which yeah, will yeah. bring him up and yeah. join him with this yeah. squad. And he can take some shock off, three yep. points of it. He'll take two off that, mm. one off that. Yeah. So once again, another great use of the command dice, bringing a senior leader on. Got a senior leader back here who was controlling the initial firefight, and now the other senior leader to to come on with a big clunking fist to drive home to victory. Yeah, well, uh, he sent a scouting patrol to secure some yeah. area, yeah. brought in another squad, yeah. and then moved up himself to take command so, of the operation. Cool fire and movement, mate. It's a thing of beauty. Yep. Right. However, yes, you have not taken into account the heroism of Le the French nation. Resistance. Right, let us see what we can achieve. Ooh, nice. That is what we call a whole lot of love. Yeah. Um, four, three, three, two, one. That's the type of role that allows me to do anything and everything, which at this point in the battle is really important. Mm -hmm. So, on a two, on a one, Yeah. Henri is going to move down the road and get back in the magic van. Toot, yeah. toot. Right. Uh, Sergeant Aubergine with mm -hmm. the engineers are back in the van. Yes. Uh, that's the one. Yeah. <clears throat> right. I've got to focus my attention on what I want to do here. Right, I'm going to do the things I know I have to do. Right, I'm going to fire that anti-tank gun. Yeah, so you're coming in after my tank yeah. once more. Five. I need a five to hit. I have done it. Right. <laughs> Hooray. If I'd had any shock on that, it would have been a minus one. Yeah. So I'm just lucky that they hadn't taken any shock. So I'm going to roll my five killer dice. Fives and six. I've only got one five and six. Okay, so I'll roll one, needing <laughs> so a five or a six. I'm in danger of knocking a mudguard off. No, you roll two. Oh, two? Yeah, you got two. Uh... There we go. Right, there we go. Okay. So that's nothing. However, nothing can still have an effect. So roll oh. a d6, okay. and we see what the effect is. On a one so or I'll two, nothing happens. Right, three or four means you have to engage that anti-tank gun in the next... Next that's phase. Fine. That's fine by me. It, in this situation, that's probably what he was going to do anyway, but in some situations where the tanks are trying to get a sort of armoured blitzkrieg on, yeah. being forced to stop and engage an enemy can be a good way of breaking up the cohesion mm -hmm. of the enemy's tank attack. So, uh, yeah, So you've got a two, a three, <coughs> and a four left. I have. Right. With the three, I'm going to take one point of shock off there. Mm hmm and I'm going to fire up the road with six, yeah, so six. Firing once more back down yeah, in here. Yeah, I am. Into my guys but, right here. Yeah, as we know, we're at close range now. Mm -hmm. So, six, 
seven, eight. The firefighters got to answer deadly. Eleven, it will do. Twelve. Right, and what was that on? Uh, that was on a two, because I don't need any. Oh, no, it was on a three, because I did, did some rallying there. Yeah. yeah. So you've got mm. two and a four. All right. Now. Let's see what we do. Fours, fives, and sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nerf. Oh. In French. And I'm so in the open. Four on the rifle team and five on the machine gun team, please. <coughs> All right, machine gun team first. Yeah. This could hurt. Uh, fives and sixes kill, threes and fours are shock. So, so two dead, two, two shock. Two dead, two shock. I'll put the two shock there. Well, so you can, yeah, you've got it, you got the shot right. Yeah, okay. And then, so it's four two, on the two rifle. Two dead, team. we'll keep a note of that. Yeah. And four on the rifles. It's two more, dead, another two and dead another and shot. a shock. So that's four dead. So roll the dice. Mm. Now, the interesting thing here is your senior leader is within range. So one. one, that means one of them's the leader. Which one is it? The junior leader, one, two, three, or the senior leader, four, five, six? Senior, <coughs> leader. senior leader's hit. Roll the dice for the effect. This, this, this hurts. This hurts. Mm. I'll re-roll that. Re-roll that one in the box. Six. Right. Good news for you, he's lightly wounded, which means that he's, his command rating comes down to two, uh, but at least he's not dead or anything like that. Yeah. Nevertheless, then, we roll for na naughty things. But still well, means I have to lose two from my machine gun. Yeah. And then... Two from the rifles. How, however, remember, one of them is a leader, so you can just take one off the rifles mm -hmm. and two off the... Yeah, uh, and they've got the shock uh, sitting there. Two off, One off the machine gun and two off the rifles. They have. So... Roll me a dice for a senior leader wounded. Uh, five. It's two points off your false morale. Uh, six, four. Now, right. now you lose a command dice. Right, is it? Yeah. We look for the Germans in here, the first wave German platoon, and we will is see... It when I hit the four or when I'm under four? It's uh, when you hit the four. Ah. So you're now down to four command dice and you lose the red dice. That's a Wait, big, four command dice? big blow. Yeah, oh. you're down to four. It's a big blow. It's ah. a big blow. And you've still got a two and a four. I have still got a two and a four, and I plan to do evil things with it. Right, I am going to... The senior leader here is going to take off two points of shock. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Why do you get the feeling that van's about to get ordered to boogie? I think it might be. And we are going to move down in that direction. Now, there's a gate there. Let's roll for movement in the magic box. Right, eight. Uh-huh. There's a gate there, so gates always count as open. Yeah. So these guys are simply moving down to take up position here. So once again, it's still pretty desperate for me because what I'm trying to do is just get troops down there to block you, but I'm not exactly in a very tactical stance. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'm a bit of a mess, really, but I am now... You're still really grinding me down. It is it is a tough fight, and I am counting on the fact that I've still got five command dice, and you're now down to four. Mm -hmm. With that dove, dove coat, gets knocked over a lot. Yeah. People clearly just don't like birds around here. So right, away we go. Now, what else have I got? A four? No, I've a used two. a four. I've got a two. <laughs> These guys, I'm going to activate this squad. Okay. <clears throat> They're going to move down the road, conducting a bit of a fighting withdrawal to cover... Sergeant Aubergine's little van. Mm -hmm. So we are pulling in. It's a culvert, so troops can get across the rubble. Yep. But uh, actually, what I'll do is we'll count it as a minor obstacle, so I'll take off the two. Yep. Uh, so they get back to there. Right. That's c'est moi. Complet. Mm -hmm. It's your go. With my four. With your four dice. I can work with that. Oh. Two chain of command. Yeah. And then a four and a one. Yeah, that's one of those rolls that isn't great, but having that four at this point in time, the senior leaders are really, really important. He's mm -hmm. even if he's wounded, he's still got he can still activate both those squads over there. Mm -hmm. um, but he won't be able to do a lot of rallying. Well, what any. I'm going to do is for the one. Yeah. Yep. Mortar team's going to yep. launch a shell. Yep. And he is going to launch it onto. Mm -hmm. Your squad here, right. okay. the back one. Yeah, so roll me two dice for that, please. Yeah. 
Just to see if I can get something. Fives and sixes, yeah, Take he's one. got a hit. So uh, they're in the open, so it can't be any worse. So it's a point of shock. That's fine. If they were in cover, they'd have taken All right. it. So, uh, uh, then my four yeah. is going to be my senior commander. Both squads yeah. are just going to lay into that front squad. Right, fine. OK, well, uh, right. So we've got 11 dice for the front unit on the road. Yeah. Four and then three more. Uh, so you know on the road uh, with <coughs> two points of shock on one one on the other and I think yeah that's there? true ten dice ten dice mm, okay yeah. still force hit so uh, really uh, five five okay so the unit that's just exposed itself in in the road that's run down from uh, dovecote yep. orchard no uh, is there any damage in that squad there's none so far. Yeah, the one man was dead. Yeah. Right, so whichever one has the one man dead, mm, yeah. I want that to take the extra hit. Okay, that's fair enough. So three dice on what we call the right hand team. So another man dead. That's another man dead. So we'll take him off. We'll roll in a minute for leaders. Uh -huh. And two dice on the other team, which oh, is another, another man, man dead. dead. So nice. we'll roll now. One or two, it's the leader. It's no, not. It's, it's, it's not. two guys dead. Two guys dead. I will take that all day. Well, it, uh, it's all about tipping those scales, isn't it? But yeah. fortunately for me, no bad things happen. Yeah. The other squad die fires. Yeah, they've it got... does. Now, let's have a look at what they've got, what position they're in. Right, OK. Bit of a clump, but let's give them a dozen dice. Because okay. some of the men at the back can't fire, but the machine gun can and another four guys. It's coming up to Christmas, and I'm being generous. Thank you, it. sir. Lots of ones. Uh, and it's the fours that count, so four hits. Yeah. So, so we're going on the same team. <clears throat> two, right hand team, one dead, one shock. Left hand team, two dead. Two dead. Holy mascarpone, Batman. <sighs> the leader. leader hit. Uh, we've also got a senior leader there. So junior leader or senior leader? It's the junior leader. Uh -huh. And what happens to him? Three. He's knocked down. I'll take that. So let's knock down the junior leader, and then we get two men dead. So what we've got left? Three men. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because so one was the junior leader. leader takes one. So, one so we've two. got one, uh, two. So the senior leader's there, and they're, they're on the verge of losing a whole team, but not quite. Mm -hmm. uh, but the junior leader being wounded is Six. one point off of force morale. So mm -hmm. I'm down to eight. Uh-huh. Still, I've still got that margin uh, where I can. Uh, yeah, I'm still keeping my command on. Bit of French grit there. This is a really interesting force. That this was a, this is a type of French unit that was put together after the British had evacuated at Dunkirk mm -hmm. with a specific job of covering withdrawals. They would zoom about on their motorbikes, mm -hmm. do things like demolitions, trying to slow the Germans down. They are holding, and very we're seeing well. them really. They've got a lot of firepower, which gives them a punch, but. Mm -hmm. We are seeing that now that they're starting to take hits, and very quickly, if those two teams go, my morale could be tumbling right down. Mm -hmm. But let's do what we can do to keep you away. Ooh. That's a horrible roll. That's rough. That's a horrible roll. Two, well, two points, okay. Senior leader, well, it's all down to the senior leaders, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Three. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to bring on a senior leader. Where from? My main leader ah. here, and he's going to say to he's going to say to the men in the van, do a three point turn, turn around. So, yeah. uh, funnily enough, there are no rules written for three point turns. <laughs> but, so I'm simply going to say it takes a turn to turn the whole vehicle yeah. round in that's, this tight that's space. Fair. It's um, uh, yeah, I didn't really want to get into changing gears and things like that mm -hmm. when writing the rules. But they've turned that vehicle around, which is a good thing. He's got three command points, so he's going to get the anti-tank gun to fire. The famous anti-tank gun of rubbishness <laughs> is going to fire and hit again. Ah, okay. But can we do more than knock off a mudguard? This time we need... We Ooh. get two net, two penetrative hits. So roll your two dice to see what happens. Five or six. Mm. Uh, one. One. Gone. So it's so one net hit. It's one net hit. So we look that up in the magic book. And I roll a five. Right. We try using the rules rather <laughs> than the 1940 Blitzkrieg book. So fire against vehicles. One net hit. A five. One shock. And your gun sights are damaged. So it's minus one to hit when you're firing the main gun. Oof. So That's rough. It's... Uh, yeah, it's good for me though. Yeah, now as we can see, uh, that tank 
has got two points of shock. Yeah, he's not liking it as much. He's not. At this stage of the war, these German tank crews are pretty good. They've got a morale of three. If it exceeds that, if you get four points of shock, they're not going to like it. They're going to bail out and abandon the tank. Mm -hmm. It's not always a case of having to blow things up. Later in the war, you can sometimes see you know, really raw tank crews might have a morale of what two or even one sometimes mm -hmm. where they jump out the minute somebody, the postman knocks on the <laughs> turret with a letter. Right, OK, so we fired that anti-tank gun. Mm -hmm. uh, what else are we going to do now? We've got the engineers going. We're quite happy with them there. So that senior leader's done all he can. Mm -hmm. The other senior leader over here, yes, he is going to get these guys here to fire. I'm really worried about them, actually, because they've got a lot there's only three men left in that uh, whole squad is it perhaps time to run <laughs> it's kind of maybe time to fall back and and uh, it's a bad situation there's nothing good about this right he's going to issue an order to this squad here uh -huh. to move so the further back yeah squad. yeah to move around with, Three inches. Yeah, 1d6, which means they're going to be kind of, well, they've, they've got shock. I was hoping these guys would get round and be able to fire, mm. but that's pretty rubbish. Well, you've um, at least got a little cover on them. Yeah, he's got a bit of cover, which I suppose is, is one thing. And then using the other command initiative, um, mm -hmm. uh, those guys, are, interestingly, haven't got any shock, so he's going to get them to run because... Uh, Oh my God, that's a disastrous roll. Harsh. So they've only gone five inches. Retreating, yeah. Sorry, these guys are hanging about over there. Yeah. These guys are retreating down here, but they, they haven't got out of cover, which means that they're a pretty clear target. They are taking their leader with them. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping to restabilize the lines back here because what I'm trying to avoid is having my false morale drop by teams being wiped out but all I've succeeded in doing is presenting my backside to you to kick well um, you, you did get one squad into really good cover right down the back there, yeah so that's that, not too bad that's not too bad yeah and I've got a three well with a three the guy who's at this back unit the mm -hmm. junior leader is going to take their two points of shock off so that's at least enough. We have got one pretty well established squad back there. Mm -hmm. um, but Whereas mine are a little bit. Yeah, bit. it was not the hand I was truly hoping for. Mm. So, your go, roll your command, your four command dice. Yeah. Uh, the six is no good to me. But right. The, the couple that I've got there, not bad. Immediately, I'm going to play my chain of command dice. I'm sacrificing this to interrupt your turn. Okay. Because I cannot afford to have those two squads wiped out. Right. I did forget to put the two points of shock on the two teams. Mm. I can't afford to run them anymore and get any more shock, because if I do, those guys are going to be so disordered, they become a whimpering pile of human beings. Yep. So I'm just going to roll two dice to move. Seven which gets them out of trouble and round that corner. Thank goodness mm -hmm. for that. So we've just activated that unit. The leader is still knocked down, but at least we've got those guys out of the way, mm -hmm. which was critical. Right. Uh, now, there is one good thing for me now. Because in my last phase, mm. I didn't activate that tank. Yeah. It had to target you then. It's yeah. now a new phase. Does it still Does have to target you? No, no, it was only in the next phase. Excellent. So yeah. I'm going to activate him and I'm going to get him on the move. Yeah. Well, he's got. remember, he's got two command initiatives. He might as well take a point of shock off as well. Yeah, yeah, he'll take a point of shock off as well. But he's going to move for two days so he can still fire his machine gun. But remember, he can't cross the blown up culvert. Oh, he's not trying not. to. No, that's fine then. <laughs> right, where's he going? Uh, he's Where's going he a distance of 10, Yeah. plus anything else? No, that's plus 2 per dice, 14. 14 mm. is perfect for mm. what I want to do. Mm. So he is just going to mm. trundle nicely. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. Well, intriguingly, he's crossing the line of the boggy ground, uh -huh. and he's rolled a double. Ah, which means he actually bogs in as he goes over ah. through the boggy boggy ground. I'll take that. So the good news is <clears> he <throat> can see through the the orchard yeah. directly to the little van. Uh, he can because the, the viewing through the orchard is not as bad as uh, deep forest. Uh, so he, he actually rolls uh, six dice, uh, which I will take quite happily just to get you know get mm. them moving a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the four. Ooh, that's that's not bad. Three hits. Yeah. 
Uh, soft skin vehicle. Yeah. That's one point of shock on the guys in there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They already carried one point of shock, so they've now got two points of shock on them. Mm -hmm. If you've got more sixes than that, you could start doing uh, damage to the vehicle, but you don't with that. It's three hits. Oh. And you've rolled two. How mean. <laughs> and a man dead. Lovely. <laughs> that means... Yeah. <laughs> that means... That the one man in there yeah. breaks and routes. <laughs> so he now rolls 3d6, to uh, 2d6, away. and adds 6. Uh, so he goes 12 inches, yeah. swerving round the people in the road. And um, effectively... Presents a beautiful target. Uh, effectively causing me all sorts of problems about how to stop them driving off with the <laughs> explosives. Um, However, we shall see. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, so I've used a three for the tank. Yeah. I've got a three. Yeah. I'm going to use my junior officer here. Mm, yeah. Although he was injured, wasn't he? He was. But yeah. he, he can still, he's still got two activations. Yeah. And he can activate two different squads, whereas the, the junior leaders can only activate their own squads. Ah, but I've only got a three. Ah, I see. So well, in which the... case you can't activate him, you can only activate one of the junior leaders. Exactly. That's what I'm on about. So my junior right. leader activates. Yeah. He was wounded and lost one of his, so yeah. he's only got the one. Yeah. So yeah. I can't take anything off. No. But, but I will have them take the shot from where they are up at that, because it's, it's too good a target it is. to miss. There are troops within four inches, so we will split the hits. That's fine. But let's Although, go for it. No cover. No cover. So I can focus. 12 dice. Six. Eight. Ten. And actually, with the angle that we're on there, yeah. I'm actually going to call it that it would only be eight. Okay. Just because there's so many guys in the way. Yeah, that's fair coming. It is a bit of a clump, isn't it, rather it than is. a tactical formation. So I'm, I'm going to be fair on this. Yeah, yeah. Fours, five, sixes. Uh, uh, Four hits. Yeah, I think we're in 18. Let's just give that a quick yes. Four hits. Yeah. Right, so we'll put two on the guys in the uh, infantry. And that's one dead because they're in the open. And two on the magic van. Oh. Two dead. There is no doubt about that. Driver, the driver! D -d 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 careers off the road, crashes into the swamp with the entire crew of engineers dead. He made it to the culvert. He made it to the culvert. Moral victory. I suppose he could have crashed the vehicle into the culvert in some kamikaze exercise, <laughs> but it does seem a little unlikely. Yeah. So I have to say that I have failed to complete my objectives, good and game. victory is yours. Yeah, good fun. <laughs> uh, oh. That was an entertaining one. I might I mean, like, go and cry now. I feel <laughs> <laughs> robbed at the last minute. Well, I mean, it, it was a really hard push. What what saved my bacon mm. was the fact that whenever we were doing that first phase, that first mm. angling of where we were going to get yeah, jump yeah. off points, I pushed way out the side just to try and hook mm. up and around because I knew you were very quickly closing in on me there and you could have locked yeah. me down super quick. Well, funnily enough, I realised very quickly what you were doing and I actually responded to it early in the patrol phase, but then I had to come back here and defend this because if, I, if exactly. I can't blow this one up, I've lost the game. Yeah. Blowing this one up was kind of, I thought, this is the difficult one. Once I've done that, mm -hmm. I can take a leisurely drive back down the road mm -hmm. and blow that up while the action continues over here. But you taking that outflanking manoeuvre really changed the whole dynamics. It mm -hmm. did what I said at the first and kind of yeah, twisted did. the game around. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a, chan a bridge too far, a <laughs> culvert too far. <laughs> All right, well, everybody, I'll tell you what, get your comments in below. Tell us what you thought of that run through of Chain of Command. I really enjoyed it. I really like the way this one played out. Mm. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>